Hi guys, my name is Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, good evening. Um, it is Thursday evening. Um, I want to talk about how my eye test went and what I thought of Boots Opticians in Strood, which is located almost opposite uh, the entrance to Wilkinson and one of the entrances to Asda as well. You can walk through Wilkinson's and get into Asda. I don't know if that Wilco is, at, <laughs> is open because I didn't go in there. Because the Wilkinson in Chatham is shut down. So, Alexa, what's the time please? The time is 4.39pm. Right. I feel tired. My legs ache. And um, I'm mentally and emotionally exhausted as well. So, I got up this morning. I did not go into the co-op, so I did not speak to Kim. Kim is the lady that I've known in the co-op for about three or four years. And I go in there and she's if she's in there and she sees me, she'll say hello. I didn't go in the cop this morning. I went straight onto the field to walk Max because I had to go to an 11.15 a.m. appointment at the opticians. So normally I back out of it. Like, you know, I've, I've made appointments and I've not gone to them because something's cropped up in the morning or I haven't felt well because I have health conditions today I got up and I didn't want to go I, I'll be blatantly honest I didn't want to go to the opticians at all but I thought I, I need glasses because I was sat in my flat last night and when it gets dark I can't see properly and it's really affecting me so I thought right we're going to get this done and then we won't have to go again for a while so get this done so um, when I took Max out, it was okay until I was coming back off the field where this butch woman with like long brown hair mixed with grey bits came towards me and she was holding a big brown furry dog on her lead. And um, I felt a bit intimidated. I don't know why, but I did. I felt this woman came across as a bit intimidating. So I stood on the grass and I just walked to the side and I, I went off because I don't want confrontations, I don't want anger, I just want to walk my dog and get off the field. And a lot of the time it's when I'm trying to get off the field that I feel like people start talking right in the middle of the path or they bring a big, a big, uh, bring a big dog up. And, you know, a, a jogger's frightened to run past the dog sometimes. That's, that's nothing to be ashamed of saying. When you see a big dog coming towards you, it, you know, if you, especially like I have when I was a kid, have been bitten by a dog, you know what I mean? So I got off the field and I'm just, it's hot. It's boiling hot. It's getting towards, the, you know, the middle of June. It's bound to be hot. I don't want to have arguments. I don't want to be moody. I just want to get to and from where I'm going. So as I was coming back down to my flat, there was this man in a blue T-shirt and a grey cap, and he kept scratching his bottom. And I thought, ooh. I don't want to see him scratch his backside. And you could see the outline of his boxer shorts, right? And I thought, I don't want to see that, thank you. And he was on his mobile or loudspeaker, and I don't walk down the street scratching my bottom, showing my knickers. I don't do that. So I got into my flat. That hadn't put me going off um, to the opticians. So I... Um, got ready and I uploaded a video and then I slowly got myself ready to, to walk over the Strood Bridge. It's not a particularly nice journey, I don't like it. You've got bicycles, people, the heavy traffic coming towards you, people smoking 
Um, so I just got myself uh, psyched up for it and um, basically I made sure Max was okay and I went out of the flats after the bin men had come down the road because remember that the Scottish stalker said he was a bin man. So I walked up the road and I just walked slowly, I took it easy and I walked slowly over the Strood Bridge normally, there was like normal people coming across, one guy blew smoke out of his mouth but I was on the, he was that side, I was that side so it didn't come in my face uh, and I walked slowly and I got to the opticians and um, this is when it feels like you're you're in a comedy show like uh, Barbara Windsor in um, Carry On films. So I walked into the opticians, the lady smiled at me, thin lady with brown hair and um, I put myself in and I sat down. There was one woman called Leslie so I was sat there and Leslie was sat there and Leslie eventually got called over. I seemed to be waiting ages. Right, I just wanted it over and done with. That's all I wanted. I wanted it over and done with. I just seemed to be sat there for ages. These women kept coming in. Um, various shapes and sizes. Women. And my t-shirt, I didn't get it for gay pride. I got it because I like the colours of it. So it's a heart shape with the gay pride colours. I'm not gay. I happen to like the t-shirt because it's a bright colours and it's big. So I've got this t-shirt on, it's got a flag on it. And I've got it on because it's big, it's extra large and it's comfortable. I don't buy something because of what it stands for. I, I, I buy it because I like it, because it's colourful, because it fits me. Uh, and, and, and that's it. So we'll get on to why I've said that later. So we have a woman called Leslie sat to the left of me. And then we have this man in a pair of jeans and a pair of really long brown shoes. I would say he was about a size 11, 12 foot. And he was like Charlie. He had no teeth. And he was, had a little bit of hair on top, no teeth, really long brown shoes and denim jeans. And he, he wasn't as skinny as Charlie, but he was skinny. He wasn't a fat blood. So he went over to the glasses because they, you know, when you have your, 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 the little bit of where your eyes, they take photograph of your eyes, then you're going for your eye test. Then you come out and choose your glasses. So this guy was choosing his glasses. And all the staff were female, apart from one very young Asian man who kept smiling and laughing. And he had, um, like, <laughs> because I'd done a video saying about this guy scratching his bum and showing his underpants, this Indian man had a belt that looked like a pair of under, the top of underpants but it wasn't it was a belt he was wearing really skinny indian guy he kept laughing to himself looking over and giggling and laughing he was the only male member of staff and he was on the desk at the front so this guy with the bald head and the no teeth was choosing his glasses and he had a wallet in his pocket, so he was buying glasses for over a hundred pounds. Um, I remember that um, the guy on the phone this morning that was messing about with his trousers said she she's being uncooperative. She's being uncooperative. So you've got Leslie, you've got a guy like Charlie, really thin with no teeth and receding hair nice big wallet in his trousers, choosing expensive glasses and I'm an NHS patient, I am. So no Calvin Klein glasses for me. So basically 
all these women are dealing with the guy that looks like Charlie, Leslie, and then another woman came in. Then the, the Asian man was talking to a mum with a young daughter and, and she was buying glasses for her daughter, a little kiddie of about seven or eight. Um, eventually I got called over by a female member of staff and I got taken into a room where I had photographs of my eyes taken. I was asked do I want a more like a more expensive uh, photograph taken of my eyes. No, I, you know, I, you know, as long as my eyes are healthy, uh, I, I wasn't bothered. I was asked what, what my hobbies were and I've got a varied load of hobbies. I've got, um, I said walking and writing, but I have, I've got a massive load of hobbies, you know, so I just gave her a couple. I um, sat down and more little eye tests, look this way, look that way, and I've lost my glasses, you see, I'd lost them, so they didn't have, they couldn't test my old glasses, so they got in contact with the Boots Opticians in Chatham, where I last had an eye test, and got information from there as well. Um, I went back into the waiting room to wait for Emma. The lady told me, um, when Emma's ready, she'll come out and get you, Emma. And then this woman walks in off the street. She, she walks in off the street, and she's skinny. And I wouldn't say she was pretty, because she wasn't. Uh, she had a very skinny face. She had brown hair. And she had a mobile phone in her hand. And she came in to the opticians while I was sat there. Um, and she went up to the desk and she said, Oh, um, she wanted, can I buy some glasses? And the receptionist said, oh, You want to buy some glasses? She went, Yeah. Um, I was in blue water. Blue water, she specifically said blue water. Um, she, she, she said, I was in blue water and I've chosen some glasses. Um, so the lady came out and started talking to this lady that just walked in off the street with no appointment. So this young woman just walked in off the street with no appointment and was getting all professionally seen to. She was by like the Calvin Klein glasses. Oh, she was getting the expensive glass frames, picking them up. She chose her glasses. The member of staff sat down with her. And she was on her mobile phone in the opticians and she was sp speaking to Paul. She was speaking to Paul over the phone. Paul. And um, at that point I got called in by Emma. Emma came out, uh, another woman. Um, optop, op, what, ophthalmist, whatever you call it. The one that tests your eyes. Um, I sat, I was told to sit down on this chair and it's changed since I last had an eye test. It has. They still put like the spectacles over your face that test, the way they test the lenses. They've still got that, but there was, you know, it's, it's moved on. It's more machinery than it is like messing around with lenses. So, um, she, um, you know, you've got the, like, the letters that you have to read. And my eyes were fucking blurry. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> there was all these letters on the wall. I couldn't see one of them. And she said, that's okay, that's fine. And she put the lenses in the glasses and everything until they were the right, right strength and everything. Um, I had a, a light shone in my eyes, both my eyes had lights all shone through them she was looking at my eyes look up look down look left look right and she went i like your t-shirt so she'd sit in the consultation room she said she liked my heart t-shirt with the different colors oh and one of the customers was called kim one of the customers was called kim and this woman in the uh, consultation room said i like your t-shirt 
and all I could hear out I could hear everything the staff were saying in the shop. I could hear the laughter, I could hear what they were saying to each other through the walls. I could hear everything and I was trying to have my eyes tested and it was so bloody noisy. I had to sit there as if it was, uh, I, there was no noise at all. It was unbearable. It was loud. It was like six or seven people laughing and talking really loudly in a pri while I was having a private consultation. It didn't feel private at all. And I had to sit there and not lose my temper so that I could get glasses to see out of. I wanted to say, shut the fuck up. I did, but I didn't do it. And um, there you go. Emma printed off my prescription. I don't know where I've actually put it. She printed off my prescription. Printed it off. I care your recommendation, boots opticians, your prescription details explain. My, your prescription is suitable for contact lens trial. So she was a consultant optometrist, ophthalmic medical practitioner. You need help seeing things far away, for example, when driving or watching TV. You need help seeing things close up, for example, when reading or using digital devices. I've examined your eyes, I find you do need sight correction. So there you go, I've, I've got my prescription because I actually want, there, there's some online services where they do glasses and I asked Boots in Chatham for my prescription and they wouldn't give it to me. So I've got a prescription from Boots in Stroop. That's another thing I wanted, my eye prescription. And I've got a receipt. So I'm under the NHS. Um, I had to pay seven. Uh, £37.60 to get um, tint, like a tint on my lens, on, my, on my, one pair of glasses, £37.50 because the glare of the sun can trigger headaches so I w wanted a tint on one of my pairs of glasses but they're basic boots glasses, they had all makes of glasses um, but in the future, if I want uh, a posh pair of glasses, I can get them because I've got my prescription. So no bother. So this girl walks in off the street with her Calvin Klein handbag, getting her Calvin Klein pair of uh, glasses. And she's been to Blue Water. For anybody that doesn't know, Blue Water is a big shopping centre in Blue Water and I've been there several times. It's a, it's a shopping centre and it's very expensive. You can spend a fortune at Blue Water. So, uh, there you go. Um, I needed to go to the toilet, they didn't have a lavatory, she said there's no toilet, so I don't know where the staff used the toilet, but I couldn't go to the toilet, and uh, these two blokes walked in, a uh, very odd looking couple, I don't know whether they were together, 
two short stocky looking blokes looking comfy together on the chairs one of them with short black hair stocky and another bloke and they just kept making a bit of a nuisance of themselves they were annoying me while I was trying to chip when I was trying to choose my glasses they were making noises like him upstairs and it was putting me off because they have to measure you you choose your frames and they measure the bridge of your nose and everything and these guys were putting me off keep coughing like him upstairs it was pissing me off but I didn't get cross and angry I chose my glasses and Boots Opticians is going to ring me when they're ready but I've had to pay £37.50 just to have one set of glasses with the glitter so the sun doesn't shine through but they're not uh, sunglasses, they're just like got a tint on them. And the lady that was showing me the glasses showed me her glasses. She said it's like a bluey green tint. And that'll do for me. Um, it used to be 10, 20 pounds, that's gone up to 37 pounds 50. I did, the other pair, the one that is for reading close up, I didn't because I'm not going to do that outside side. I wanted the, the ones with the tint on so that when I go outside and I'm reading road signs that when the sun shines like on summit or a car has its headlights on it's not shining in my eyes. Um, I wore sunglasses when I went out because even when the sun's shining uh, car headlights are on full blast and that would give me a headache so I, I, I purposely wore sunglasses when I went outside because if I get a headache in the middle of the eye test I wouldn't have been able to have my glasses you see because if I get one of my headaches I can't see properly so I, I, that's why I needed to be able to, to have a smooth eye test and not have to come back again so that's been done so that's cool and I left I left um, the boots opticians and um, I've got my glasses sorted out finally and I'm looking forward to getting them and seeing people as they really are because for the past five months I've been living in a blurry world and it's all because I feel intimidated and just to going out to do my day-to-day -day activities by bullies and also my mother doesn't wear glasses and it's indoctrined in my head uh, that glasses are disguises uh, my mum is short-sighted she needs to wear glasses but it's vanity when my mum was younger it was pure vanity reasons that she wouldn't wear glasses it was nothing to do with what she's turned into now uh, a monster <laughs> in my opinion because she put me off wearing glasses as a child because she wouldn't wear her own so I'm, I'm keeping away from the negativity uh, my mum has called and we're gonna give you the answer phone messages but I don't want to live in a negative atmosphere anymore see you later